Hello, Aries. Welcome to your weekly reading for April 22nd to the end of the month. This is for Aries and Aries rising, and we're going to jump right into it. Aries, you know, out of all the signs, you are the sign that is possibly going through the biggest transformation, and you're going to still continue to feel it, okay? Because we came out of that new moon total solar eclipse in your sign. We just had the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. As I explained, these are cycles, okay? So you're on this new path, this new cycle, this new chapter in your life. Now, this week, while you have all these new things happening for you and you are going to start, you're going to continue to feel it for the next few months, some things have to end, right? There's got to be culmination to some, uh, you know, chapters of your life, areas of your life. And it is going to start on Tuesday, April 23rd, when we have that full moon in Scorpio. Now, if you saw your monthly forecast, you know that I said this is a very, very emotional, a very emotional full moon. Now, full moons in Scorpio are already very emotional, but it may be truly a feeler for, for y'all, okay? Because this is in your eighth house of transformation, personal transformation, death and rebirth, life cycle. So remember, you're going through a big, big change, Aries. You're going through a big, massive, major change. Here's the thing. I want you to think about what happened for you around November 13th, 2023, when we had the new moon in Scorpio. Think about what conversations you're having around that time maybe go through your instagram feed see what you were doing around that time because there's possibly something there that you started and now there's coming uh you're reaching this culmination to this uh the the you know to whatever had started around there it could have to do with other people's money because you know this full moon in scorpio scorpio rules your eighth house so it's going to be in your eighth house which is also money, but shared resources. So it could be inheritance, investments, assets, some something around there. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, the eighth house has that intensity. So remember, this could be you going really deep on an emotional level. The eighth house is also intimacy. There could be something in matters of intimacy for you as well. That comes up around this time. So just know that this full moon, one of the reasons why it may be deeply emotional is because we're officially in Taurus season with a full moon in Scorpio, and then there are both going to square Pluto and Aquarius. So we're talking about three fixed signs here. So there's a little bit of wiggle room. All right. It's really asking you to go deep, to really explore your emotions, to really, really, um, you know, even your intuition. Okay. A lot of intuitive energy around this as well. So uh, again, there could be some shift happening around this time. There could be some moment of clarity, even for you, uh, especially if you do go really deep around this time, there could be a turning point, could be the end of a chapter for a new chapter to begin. Okay. So use this time to even heal, you know, uh, uh, full moons, not only culminate, they illuminate. So you may even find some secrets coming out around this time, or it could be you telling some secrets around this time. Okay. Some things that you've just kept, you know, close to your chest for a long time. They could be coming out around this time. Now on Thursday, April 25th, Mercury goes direct. All right. So great news. Mercury is no longer retrograde. And as you know, Mercury was retrograde in your sign. Here's the thing. Even though Mercury is going direct, it will still be in your sign. Okay. It will still be in your sign up until May 15th. Take advantage. Okay. Mercury, all about thinking logic. So you'll have a lot more clarity as the week progresses. All right. You'll, uh, communication may pick up faster. Uh, there could have been a lot of miscommunication considering the fact that Mercury was retrograde in your sign. So for the, for the past month, you could have had a lot of technical errors, de travel delays, all those things that Mercury retrograde uh, represents. One thing I do also want you to uh, know is that I call them the bookends. It's the day that Mercury goes retrograde and the day that it goes uh, direct. Those are the two days of Mercury retrograde where you feel like a really big charge. So you still may feel it around this time, but just know now there's going to be a lot more clarity moving forward after it. Okay. Now on Sunday, this is a big one. This is, we have the Mars, we have Mars conjuncting Neptune. So we have your ruling planet conjuncting Neptune, both in Pisces, both in Pisces. <laughs> so what does this mean? 
Well, conjunctions are very powerful, as you know. They have this charge about them. And Pisces is your 12th house. And so this is an aspect that is going to have a major impact on you. I'm going to tell you why, all right? First of all, Mars and Neptune could not be any more different than each other, all right? And now they're coming together. They're coming together, all right, for this powerful aspect. Think of it as like a parent forcing their child to hang out with another kid. And they have nothing in common. They have absolutely nothing in common. It's like the goth kid and the jock kid or, or whatever it is. So it's making those energies work somehow. And it is an element of using your imagination and feeling very inspired around this time. Also, using that Mars energy to boost your spirituality, to boost your intuition, all those things that Neptune represents. Okay, remember, they're happening in your 12th house. The 12th house is the subconscious. It is hidden matters. It is intuition. And so you really, uh, first of all, a lot of y'all could feel this surge of, of, of intuitive energy. That's really nice. But Mars is uh, could have this tendency to bring in that illusion side to Neptune, that fan fantasy side to Neptune and you know Neptune's not uh, Neptune's a little naughty too Neptune is uh may bring some deception around this day as well uh so just be fully aware and to be fully aware you have to trust your intuition and this is a way for you to do that okay to really connect really connect with your intuitive side so it's also a day to just really have your head above the clouds not in the clouds above the clouds one foot on the ground now interestingly the moon will be in capricorn this day so uh for a lot of y'all it may there may be something work related here okay something work related because capricorn does rule your 10th house or you know something that you want to be known for honors achievements all of those 10th house matters now the reason why i'm uh including the 29th and 30th is because they are so big they are so big the 29th if you want to mark the 29th in your calendar you go for it all right this is when venus moves into taurus all right so this is really really nice this is absolutely nice and it is uh perhaps the best day of the week okay venus is moving into its domicile and so venus is at home in taurus and so venus will be in taurus for the next few weeks and this is love this is comfort this is money even, you know, Venus does represent money. Taurus is a finance sign. So uh, this is really magical. A lot of sensual energy with Venus and Taurus as well. Uh, even when I say sensual, think your your senses, all five senses really amplified, really enhanced around this time. Seeing the beauty in things, feeling the beauty in things. I love, love this aspect, um, especially because, you know, Venus is leaving your sign and moving into Taurus, which is, you know, a lot more grounded, you know, you're fiery right your fire sign earth is uh taurus is earthbound uh so it is almost like this slow dance okay it's slowing down into this slow dance where it's this slow dance of life and again just seeing the beauty and things and it's just you could also um find yourself being like more kind to yourself treating yourself this is you know beauty uh venus also rules beauty so there is that sense of like maybe getting spa treatments and uh you know maybe a massage things that just really again treating yourself around this time you really want to do that while venus is in taurus now on the 30th venus will square pluto so we're coming out of the sun squaring Pluto, okay? Remember that that just happened in the beginning of the week, um, at the end of last week. And Pluto's just been, you've been feeling that Pluto energy, okay, all month. And it has that squeeze about it. It can be a little bit challenging. This is uh, going to be very interesting, okay? First, actually, before I even get there, Venus and Taurus, now you have Venus, the sun, uh, the moon, uh, so Venus, the sun, I'm doing this while Mercury is retrograde, the v uh, Venus, the sun, Jupiter and Uranus in your second house, Taurus rules your second house. So when I say money matters, likely going to be a thing for you and maybe top of mind this week. Yes, it may be a thing. And a lot of y'all may be moving into a lot more money now. Okay. A lot more money. Now with the Venus squaring Pluto aspect that's happening on the 30th, just know there's a squeeze about this. There's power issues, power controls, uh, or uh, power trips, but also maybe possibly control issues. Remember, Venus is 
uh, relationships and love. So it could be with a partner, significant other, but it really could also be with a friend of yours. Okay. It could be with a friend. Um, and the reason I say that is because Pluto does rule your 11th house right now, Pluto being in Aquarius and that's your social network groups you belong to. So just know there could be some sort of squeeze around this day. You just want to, you know, remember, trust your intuition. That's going to get you through anything and, you know, be the, it all, Always be the better version of yourself in any situation, any circumstance, okay? Because you could be tested around this time and you just always want to be, remember, this is Venus wearing Pluto. Remember, Venus is all about diplomacy. So being open to compromise as well. Now, on the same day, wow, this is possibly a day that you want to circle to. On April 30th, this is now Tuesday, Mars, your ruling planet, moving into your sign. Mm. Mm. That's that's your cue to do your happy dance because not only is Venus in its own sign, now uh, Mars is in its own sign. All right, so you have the two cosmic lovers in their home signs where they feel very, very comfortable, okay? Mars has been like, Crawl, really trying to get back into your sign, okay? After being in Pisces for some time. So the, Mars is going to be like a, he's in his private jet. He's moving forward. Venus is in her, you know, uh, seat thing that, you know, people are carrying her like back in the old times when they would do things like that. So they're all, they're both very happy. And you're going to feel that overlap throughout May. Okay. Now the great thing about Mars and Aries, things are going to be very fired up, fired up for you. Okay. There's going to be a lot of movement now. All right. You're going to be on a mission. You're going to feel wildly ambitious. Uh, you, I mean, pedal to the metal. All right. Just very, very, uh, driven toward your goals. Okay. Very fiery energy. Uh, you will definitely feel a charge about this. You will definitely feel a charge about this, but just remember we still, you still have the North node in your side. There's still so much happening for you. You're going through so many changes. So, uh, with that said, and oh my goodness, Mars will be in Aries until June. Wow. You got Mars in your sign until June. Okay. That's a bit. So just expect a lot of movement. All right. So with that said, Aries, let's get started. Let's see what's going on for you for the week of April 22nd to the 30th. This is for Aries and Aries rising. If you want to read for your moon, your Venus, all those other placements, you are absolutely welcome to, uh, especially because the moon and I'm sorry, not the moon. Well, yeah, the moon and, uh, Venus are both very, very active this week, as you know. So Aries, like I said earlier, I do a traditional cultic rock spread. I did not say that earlier that's mercury retrograde again i'm saying it now i do a traditional cult to cross spread really does offer the best overview if we need to pull clarifiers we'll pull clarifiers secondly aries y'all are amazing y'all are amazing and look at you go look at you go yeah you're you're definitely gonna feel this week you're gonna feel a charge about this week it's almost like you cannot wait to get moving. You cannot wait to get moving on these new paths that are opening up for you. There is that energy about this. Um, okay, let's get started. You're you're great. You're good. Something's coming too, by the way. Uh, you do have the four of uh, uh, pentacles here. So uh, remember how I talked about money, money being a thing, maybe on your mind, maybe uh, financial security, maybe, uh, you know, it's financial stability as well, uh, especially with a lot of these new things that may be happening in your life, changes and shifts that may have happened or will happen. Remember, this is your recent past that it's coming up in. And uh, I do drop these videos uh, like a little bit, a, a few days before the actual week. Okay. So if it hasn't happened yet, it may soon. Okay. You may have a little bit of a, a moment where you're like, okay, I got to really put things in order now. Okay. I really want that stability moving forward. Again, it can have to do with career here. Okay. Uh, especially because this card is attributed to sun and Capricorn. As I said, Capricorn does rule your 10th house. All right. But even if you're not here for a career, a lot of y'all are having changes. Uh, it could feel, you know, some things going on with home as well. You know, you do have the chariot and the heart of your spread. Okay. This is really great. So, uh, the chariot, it's, 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 uh, he's attributed to cancer. All right. Cancer does rule your fourth house of home, uh, your domestic life. Okay. Okay, so significant other, your actual home, like literally like home and, and real estate and maybe uh, changes happening there or, you know, family, parents, children. But in any case, you are boom, 
moving forward. You are so, I mean, this is someone who has gotten so much, he has so much drive. He has so much willpower, okay? And this is someone who is just like, I know what I want. I'm going for what I want. I'm in, not only in touch with my intuition, I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot on my journey and I'm ready to continue going and nothing's going to stop me. Okay. There is a sense of, it's not even a sense. It's like a burst of confidence this week. I absolutely love this for you. Okay. So it's really almost like if there are changes, shifts, it's balancing everything in your life It's well, making that balance, but really, really knowing that you're unstoppable. Okay. You're unstoppable. Now you do have the four of wands. So there could be something that happens this week where it is a little bit, um, Almost like if there is something that you are, uh, something new that has happened, something that you're celebrating, maybe even like a milestone, there could just be that squeeze around that, you know, just, and it's it, it, that transition, okay? There could be a little bit of, a uh, little bit of squeeze, but I'm really getting more personal for you. It's in terms of, you may feel like there are things that are uh, maybe haven't happened yet. Uh, Keyword being yet, right? It's a weekly reading. The things that you want, keep going for it. They're going to happen, right? So it's just this week you may feel a little bit of squeeze. The other thing is there may be something here where, you know, looking at your entire spread, there could be something here where you feel like there is going to be uh, this week. Uh, there's. It's almost like there could be a little bit of you having a little bit of uncertainty about some things moving forward, like in terms of these new pass paths that you've uh, decided for yourself or that you're uh, searching for now, there could be a little bit of uncertainty. But remember, when your ruling planet conjuncts Neptune, all right, that's, remember, have a foot on the ground and use that toward your intuition, all right, to really feel this you know, surge of this intuitive energy, listening to your, you know, inner voice being touch in touch with your higher self. Uh, and especially with the full moon in Scorpio, remember that's a very like deeply for y'all deeply transformative, like this personal development, personal transformation. I mean, you will definitely feel it. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to dig deep at that point. Okay. Don't be afraid to dig deep and you will have a lot more clarity. Now, Speaking of clarity, you have the Knight of Swords in your crown. All right, boom, you're ready. You're ready to go. I want you to communicate this week. Seems like a lot of y'all ready to have these big conversations. Maybe uh, uh, continue down um, uh, in terms of uh, learning something new as well. But I mean, the bigger message of all is this excitement, all right, and enthusiasm to continue to uh, uh, move forward on the path that you want for yourself, okay? It's almost, again, remember, it's almost like the theme of this week is just unstoppable. Like, you are going to be unstoppable. Even if you, you know, looking at the Knight of Swords, you see fire under his feet, right? You see he's going into the storm. He's going into the storm. This is being fearless. This is being absolutely fearless, especially up here, okay? And that's a huge thing, like your mindset, being in this mindset. Remember, Mercury going direct is going to be very beneficial for you, okay? Because like I said, you'll have a lot more clarity. You'll The conversations that you need to have will start happening. You're going to be fine. You're going to be on a mission. You got the Six of Cups in the root of your spread. This is absolutely amazing. I love the Six of Cups. Six is really like everything is just almost like harmonizing now. Okay. It's harmonizing. One thing that I want you to do, um, and something that was coming up earlier, but with when I was talking about Mercury retrograde and how uh, you really feel it on the bookends, remember Mercury will still be retrograde up until Thursday. Well, I want you to really take advantage of that in the way that with Mercury retrogrades, they are a window to the past. So a lot of people from the past could be coming up right now. You could be uh, being reconnected to people from the past as well, you know, in addition to all of the things that you're re reassessing in your life. So I want you to open that portal and I want you to be aware. Remember, you have to trust your intuition. It's going to help you because sometimes you can miss those messages. It's like even the littlest things, like if I don't know, someone on LinkedIn like likes one of your posts and it's, you know, a former boss from two years ago or whatnot. Um, and you just keep scrolling. You're like, oh, okay, interesting scrolling. F why did it, like, think about that. Think about that for a minute. Is there a reason why? Right. And maybe you may be getting messages from people from the past as well. 
keep those doors open because there is a strong connotation to nostalgia that's associated with the six of cups, uh, six of cups. But the biggest thing of all, the biggest thing of all is you really getting to a point this week where you are comfortable. Okay. Just like them, just like them. This is the biggest house in tarot indicating a lot of security, a lot of comfort. And you may feel that this week. Okay. You may feel that you, uh, can let your guard down now because you've got all this empowerment energy. You have all this confidence about you this week, which is really amazing. And the other thing is this card is attributed to sun and Scorpio. So again, a lot of, uh, you feeling comfort, uh, in terms of your personal growth and your, uh, transformation that's happening for you, because look at where it leads. Um, you're good. You have the Ace of Swords in your future. You're definitely going to have this breakthrough. All right. The breakthrough that you seek. Look at this. You have the Knight of Swords and the Chariot. Uh, this is really great. You're going to have this huge breakthrough. Ace of, uh, and remember I said from the full moon in Scorpio alone, just that alone, that's in your eighth house of that really deep transformation. Um, aces bring in change. Okay. So do swords. So this is a big card of change, all right? Especially the way that you think about things, all right? So a lot of this is going to be changing the way that you're seeing things. You could be in a situation. You could, like, move jobs or, you know, you could change careers. You could, uh, you know, be in a new relationship, things like that, that shift the way that you change or see things as well, all right? And this is also a lot of clarity. It's, like, brilliant ideas. It's, like, now you're out of that fog, uh, you know, once you get past the the fog of Neptune as well and Mercury retrograde, both that are going to be happening this week. Boom. Like you're, you're golden. You're golden. You see the crown here. There's a lot of victory. There's a lot of success in this card, new opportunities, pay attention to contracts. Okay. Pay attention to contracts, but just, uh, be very, very communicative this week. I want you to be very, very communicative. And it seems like you will be, it seems like you like, again, there's that energy of like, I cannot wait to get going Aries. Let's get to your stuff. I can't wait to get to your staff, Aries. If you like this reading, it would be great if you like, subscribe, all that fun algorithm stuff. Leave comments. Tell me what's going on. Y'all are going some, through some big changes. And um, you know I love y'all. Y'all are amazing. Um, and you're good. You're, you're absolutely good here. Uh, this is, this is, okay. Um, okay, let's, let's get started. You are, you are definitely going to have a week. Um, <clears throat> it is Swords. The biggest message coming through is what I said earlier. I want you to be very communicative this week, okay? I don't want you to shut yourself off. Um, this We call this the self-victim card. And this is someone who's, uh, you know, afraid to face her truth, uh, to acknowledge her truths, to be honest with herself. But someone who's also, you know, there is a little bit of self-sabotage energy with this card as well. So just get out. I mean, you're having this breakthrough, okay? You're having this breakthrough. And this is just saying that there might be a part of you that may feel that a little bit of just like oh no there's just so much happening again you're going through a big not only transformational week but like a big week of transition remember that so sure this is very possible but this is your time to have that breakthrough okay it's that time to have your breakthrough because you want your freedom and you want to feel empowered right you want to feel empowered rather than powerless okay you want to feel limitless rather than limited. And, you know, I'm going to show you something here. You can see her feet are free. Okay. She can walk out anytime she wants. Second thing, this card is attributed to Gemini and Gemini rules your third house of communication, right? So don't hold things in. It doesn't, it seems like you're there. You may have a moment and I wouldn't be surprised with the Mars conjuncting Neptune. That is powerful okay but just remember cut through that fog i mean you have all these swords that'll help you cut through that fog speaking of swords you got the page of swords so you see you got the page of swords and knight of swords and the ace of swords wow a lot here that's a lot here what's really great is uh uh not only um there is definitely messages coming through. So I, I really, really want you to pay attention, okay? Especially uh, remember, it could be uh, conversations that you've picked up with people from the past that really could be something that's happening now. Uh, and now you're in a place where there's movement with that. But again, with the Page of Swords, Ace of Swords, and the Knight of Swords, oh my goodness, uh, you're definitely having some sort of message come through. Pages are messengers, by the way. Page of Swords in your external factors area. So remember, 
be in touch with your intuition because you could be getting intuitive messages as well. All right. Pay attention to your dreams. Neptune dreams. You you may be getting this big dream. OK, that around that time as well. That remember that Sunday. Uh, but the page of storage is great. There's this enthusiasm here as well. I love it. There's something that you're, you know, the page of storage is kind of like a sponge. Um, I think I said earlier, there's something that I was feeling like this excitement to learn something new uh, or to advance your knowledge in something. But it's showing up here and it seems like you are going to have this amazing breakthrough. There may be some and, you know, yeah, of course, there could be someone else that comes through that is uh, really enthusiastic, uh, really, really excited to be on your journey. Someone that is uh, maybe sure pages are young. They're 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 super young, but, you know, they're still in the uh, royal court. They hold a lot of power. Uh, but there is someone that could be uh, not only bringing this message to you, opening up doors for you. There could be someone there this week. Pay attention. So you notice. OK, so you notice this. All right. This is going to be absolutely amazing. You also got another knight. You got the knight of pentacles. So knight of pentacles and the knight of swords. So remember what I said about that stability energy. So you got the two cards here. You got the four of pentacles and the knight of pentacles where there is. Uh, that is something that is, you know, highly associated with them in the Pentacles suite. OK, so and so th there's that level of with the Knight of Pentacles stability. That's what you want. You want to uh, move forward with, you know, uh, this again, this commitment to something. You're in it to win it. Uh, you sown your seeds. You're reaping your rewards, okay? You're reaping your rewards, and you're just going to see it through now. You're going to see it through now, and there's a lot of patience with this card, and there's also a lot of patience with the Hierophant, okay? Uh, very, very nice. Uh, the Hierophant in your final outcome, which I really love, when you look at your entire spread, um, remember I said it may be like a very intuitive, like you have this great opportunity to really connect, you know, spiritually and uh, really be in touch with your intuitive side, having those moments of awareness, having those moments where you just lose sense of space and time and you really connect with yourself and your spirit guides and like I said, your higher self and the hair font has, you know, he is the connector between the divine, our physical reality. So very, a lot of spiritual energy here with the hair font. And this is someone where uh, you see the two monks here by his feet. So has a lot of power, has a lot of influence as well. OK, a lot of structure and tradition that comes with the hair font uh, uh, as well. So you could be finding yourself being in a situation where you are. Uh, you do have this, uh, you know, bigger platform, maybe like uh, a voice that's being heard now uh, more than before. There is uh, an element of even like that stability as well. Remember that structure that comes with the Hierophant. He really, the Hierophant really loves structure, but he also loves an audience too. Uh, the other thing about the Hierophant, a lot of wisdom here. So all that wisdom that you're seeking, I mean, I feel like you're really going to find it this week. You're really going to tap into that energy. And then lastly, the Hierophant is Taurus. So remember, you have all this activity in Taurus right now, a lot of activity in Taurus, and that is your second house of money, 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 money. So there could be something there with money, finances. It is a big week for that, uh, for you especially, Aries. Um, and then the other thing is, if you're not here for uh, money, right, if you're not here for money, if, if, if you're Lady Gaga watching this video, Aries, right? Uh, then and you're just like, money, I got enough of that. Tell me something else to me. Second house is self-worth and it's, it's uh, uh, you know, self-value. So it's that confidence that I was talking about. And now it's showing up here. Okay, the hair font representing Taurus, which rules your second house, okay? So that feeling of self-worth and feeling great in that area and the value that you bring to things, okay? So really, really love this for you. Um, I do love that. I do want you to definitely uh, feel very inspired this week. I feel like there's just so much enthusiasm in your spread. The other thing is with Mars conjuncting Neptune, just remember that that is a time, a chance, and that's going to be Sunday, but around that day because it is such a big aspect you may feel it uh more than that day it is a good it, it's just tapping into your creativity and imagination as well and y'all are so creative i mean you know speaking of other aries think of you know uh uh, uh vincent van gogh and 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 leonardo da vinci and all these just you know visionary aries i mean you're moving into that it's so 
amazing to see her spread this i love this for you you're having this great breakthrough you're having this great breakthrough and you you definitely will uh, not only uh possibly be you know the one distributing knowledge in some sense but uh you will be getting some some messages too all right aries this is a great week for you i'm excited next week aries uh we will talk about uh where it's may all right it's may you know i've been talking about may for a long time now uh the best luckiest month of the year so aries uh if you like this reading it would be great if you like subscribe leave comments tell me what's going on and i will see you uh next week okay bye bye